He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that filleth with the sword must be filled with the sword. My name is Yaakov Ben Israel. I'm the elder priest of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel. And Signs of the Times is a program that's designed to give you insight into the scriptures as to what the Bible is all about. Many people think the Bible is about religion, but the people that think the Bible is about religion, obviously they haven't read the whole book. And you know it's strange how we'll build up our religious uh, beliefs and so forth, uh, and we've never read the whole holy story. And when we don't read the whole story, then truly we can get caught up into some things that's not necessarily uh, 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 the truth. And uh, what we're going to do, uh, what, I'm, what I like to do uh, is talk about uh, tonight is the first resurrection. Everyone's talking about what's going to happen, what their paycheck's going to be from the creator of all things. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the first resurrection and see what we can get up out of, the, uh, out of this history book that was left here by our fathers as a legacy to the whole earth. Now, I've, all, I've always in, uh, issued a challenge uh, to the people that uh, if, you, if you find in your book where it says that you're going to heaven, then what you do is you call in on this, uh, uh, to this uh, station and read it over there to me. Uh, remember if you, that you're going to heaven. Not that meeting the Lord in the air stuff, that you're going to heaven. Birds fly in the air, so let's not deal with that. Uh, uh, let's deal with you going to heaven and what you're going to do when you get in heaven. And uh, the number at the studio is 404-892-5614. 404-892-5614. Give me a call and let's discuss what your expectations are from the creator of all things. And then what we'll do is we'll go into, a, uh, into the book and read the book and see if what you believe is what God actually had to say. Now, when we consider the many religions that we, uh, that we practice today, uh, most of us don't go into the uh, encyclopedias and check and find out where these religions come from, why we practice these various doctrines and so forth and so on. And uh, most of the doctrines that's on the earth today if you look them up in the encyclopedia, you're going to find out that they're new kids on the block. They're less than 500 years old. And the Messiah lived more than 500 years ago. So the things that we are practicing today, uh, we have so many different denominations simply because they are the doctrine of men and the Bible proved that they are the doctrine of men. Uh, let me read you a piece of scripture here out of uh, the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 16. Let's see what Jeremiah had to say about this, 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 what's going to take place. Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 16. Behold, I will send many fishers, saith Yahweh, and they shall fish for them. Now he's talking about the house of Israel now. We the one need gathering. Everybody else is in their lands, got kings and so forth over them. We the only one don't have a, a king, a prince a religion of our own. We don't even have a, a solid economic base in our neighborhood. So uh, 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 he's talking about delivering the children of Israel because uh, when Satan was cast out of heaven, if you read Revelation 12 chapter, when Satan was cast out of heaven, he didn't go to make war with all of mankind. He, meant to, he went to make war with the remnant of the woman's seed that brought forth the man child that was going to rule all nations. Let me read uh, this scripture out of Jeremiah 16. And verse uh, 16, Behold, I will send many fishers, saith Yahweh, and they shall fish for them. And after, I will send many hunters, and they will hunt for them and on every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Now, the reason why he said they were going to have to hunt for our people because once this one world order is set into place, 
then we're going to have to flee these cities or receive that name, number, and mark. And if you receive that name, number, and mark, believe one thing, the wrath of God is going to destroy you. Uh, uh, verse 17. For my eyes upon all their ways, and they are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sins double, because they have defiled my land, they have defiled, they have fill mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. O Yahweh, my strength and my fortress and my refuse in the day of affliction, the Europeans shall come unto you from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanities, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods to himself that are no gods? Therefore, Behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is Yahweh. And ask average person, you ask what Yahweh's name is. They claim they love him so much, but when you ask him what is the creator of all things name, they haven't got the foggiest idea. Uh, uh, but what we see is this, that once the kingdom is set up, the nations that started all these religious practices that we practice today, they're going to come and say that their fathers inherited lies and things wherein there is no Sabbath. Now, let's go in the book of, that's in the Old Testament. Let's go in the book of Romans here. Romans chapter 11. And we're going to read some things out of Romans 11 and see what you can get out of this. Romans 11, and I'm going to pick this up at Romans 11 and verse 25. For I would not Brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Europeans become in. What is the Europeans' fullness? Putting a man up and worshiping that man as a god. And that is a no-no because we know that God is a spirit. Whosoever worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. But what it shows is this. It shows the degradation of man, as far as religion is concerned, to even think of work, uh, worshiping a man that eat, sleep, and have children, and, uh, 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 and do many other things that the common man upon the earth does. Verse 26, and so all Israel shall be saved, not part of Israel, all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Judah the deliverer and shall turn ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I shall take away their sins. Now remember the covenant is, was prophesied in Jeremiah 31st chapter and in Hebrews 8th chapter. He said, Behold, the days come. The covenant says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them out of the uh, 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 out of the land of Egypt because they disregarded my covenant and I disregarded them. But this is the covenant that I'm going to make with the house of Israel after those days. I'm going to write my law in their hearts and in their minds will I write them and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. See, this explains why the Messiah said in the 15th chapter of St. Matthew that he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is why he said in St. John 4.22, uh, you don't know what you worship. We know what we worship because salvation is of the Jews. However, they got some imposters in Israel today calling themselves Jews, and the Christians say salvation is of the Christians. But in verse 26 here of Romans 11 chapter says, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer that shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gift and calling of God, of God can't change. Therefore, the nations must, like the scripture says, he that leadeth in the captivity must go in the captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the faith and the patience of the saints. Now let's go a little further. Let's go back a little further in the New Testament and read some things that, uh, that James had to say. Uh, 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 James, the letter of James written to the strangers that were scattered abroad, which was the children of Israel. Now let's read James chapter 2 
and I'm going to start this at verse 6. James chapter 2, uh, uh, and uh, no, I don't think I want to start it there. If I started right there, I'd be reading some stuff that y'all don't even know what I'm reading. But let's go ahead and uh, 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 pick this up in the book of James. It says, listen, it says, From whence come his wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? You lust and you have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight war, yet you cannot have because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. Do y'all know that the average thing that we ask God for, we ask him for personal things that we can truly uh, 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 consume it, uh, 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 consume these things upon our own lust. Now, we, let's turn back to James 1 and pick the, that, that, that up again at verse 15. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bring forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bring forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights, of whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. A kind of first fruits of his creatures. I think we have a, 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 a phone call. Go ahead, call. Go ahead, call. I can't hear that caller. I'd like to ask a question. Why do, why do ministers ordain women to preach? What are you saying? I didn't hear it. Why do preachers ordain women to preach? Because uh, you have to understand who the Christian church is. And once you understand who the Christian church is, you can understand why uh, everything that the church did is set up by man. When you get in the book of Revelation, it calls the Christian church mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. It's talking about the Roman Catholic Church. And we know that the Protestant church separated from the Roman Catholic Church and they've, uh, they've made concessions and concessions and concessions and changed things and changed things. They don't do anything God had to say. Now, we know that it's against the laws of God for a woman to teach in the church, even in the New Testament. Paul told them not they couldn't teach in the church. But see, the ministers, the ministers succumb to pressure that's put on to them by females, and then they allow these things to happen. Let's understand one thing. In the black Christian church, black women run the black Christian church. So naturally, if they run the Christian church, then truly, they're eventually, they were going to be ministers. Now, when I was a young man, it wasn't no such animal as a female minister. But as time progressed and man got wiser and the world got weaker, then we can very well see why these things came about. They came about because our slave masters control the conferences of the religion, the organized religious uh, uh, system that we believe in, and they do what they want to do. They changed the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday. They gave us Peter Rabbit and this little, this little fat boy they call White uh, 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 Santa Claus that Coca-Cola gave us. They gave, they gave us those, those uh, things to deal with. But when it comes right down to dealing with the Word of God, man has gotten just as far away from the Word of God as east is from west. To show you what I mean by that, uh, uh, in, in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, let me show you what he said about Israel now. Now we know that all of the conferences that we got set up today uh, in the Christian faith were set up by who? Europeans, right? Let me read something to you out of uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Let's see what he told the children of Israel. He said, But you are a chosen generation, a generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of, called you out of darkness into his marvelous night, light, which in time past were not a people but are now the people of the living God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have attained mercy. Now, when you, when you consider, especially your older people, uh, uh, your senior citizens, they like to say, we don't like to call them old anymore, and make them, I guess that's a, a strange name to call people. 
But uh, when you can, so when you senior citizens consider the things that our people, the, the legacy that our people left us in those songs and so forth and so on, they talked about being saved and put back into their own land uh, 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 once the Messiah returns to the third. But see, the nations had said, no, that's not going to happen. All of us going up to heaven, and we're going to walk up and down the streets of gold for a million years, and then we're going to sit down for a million years. That's the only thing they can tell you they're going to do in heaven, because there's nothing actually written about that. And as far as women preaching is, is concerned, it told you in Corinthians, I read this last week, it said, let your women keep silent in the church, because it's not permitted for them to speak, but they're commanded to be in, sub in subjection as all so said the law. If they're to learn anything, let them learn from their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. If she can't speak, how can she preach? Uh, go ahead, Carla. Hello? We got a caller? Go ahead, Carla. Hello? Hello? Hello. Uh, yes, um, I'd just like to say I thank you and I thank God. Uh, the heavenly creator Yahweh for I just happened to find you and I'm just I just feel like I'm blessed to be in your presence to hear you. But I have two um questions. Um one concerning the diet dietary laws and it I can't hear you two brother times in Deuteronomy fourteen eight. I I can't hear you, brother. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. We have some technical difficulty. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I have two questions uh, uh, about the dietary. Uh, one question about dietary laws it appears two times in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy 14, 8, mm -hmm. and Leviticus uh, 11, 7, and 8. And it's, uh, um, it concerns the swine, mm -hmm. and the pig. Mm -hmm. uh, it says you don't do it, but mm -hmm. I run into people who are saying uh, that uh, as long as you bless it in Jesus' name, it's okay to eat it. Mm -hmm. uh, and my question to you is, um, well, you know, what's up with that? Well, what's up and with I it, my brother? And same. I have another question that I would like to ask. You. Okay. Uh, and the second question uh, deals with uh, uh, my um, my understanding is uh, about pastors and preachers dealing in government affairs. Uh, are they supposed to be Men of God, are they supposed to be uh, so called men of God? Are they supposed to be, um, are, you know, dealing in government affairs? And uh, I'll hang up and I thank you for taking my question. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, my brother. As far as dealing with the governmental system uh, is concerned, why deal with a governmental system that don't keep the laws of God? You know what that's all about uh, uh, from the beginning. The United States government has a system uh, that they call the Constitution that was written by men. And they're still trying to interpret that bad boy. They haven't got the foggiest idea what some of it is all about because different men interpret different things different ways. But see, what I like about the Bible is this. You don't have to do any interpreting. It, it's very explicit. Yahweh explained everything that he had to say. If man would set up a governmental system, and use the laws of God instead of the, uh, 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 the thoughts and ideas of men, then this would be a much better world to live in, truly, because the earth would blossom and rejuvenate itself, and sin wouldn't be running as rampant on the earth as it is. And then when you look at the governmental system, the governmental system is just as corrupt as the people that put them in office, and we all know that. So we know what that's all about. It's all about money and power. It has nothing to do with God whatsoever. President carry his little Bible, but that's all he's doing is carrying it. He having the foggiest idea what the real story of the Bible is about. But I tell you one thing he knows that you don't know. He knows who you are. That's the world's greatest kept secret. All the governmental system on, systems on the earth know who you are except us. How can they tell now? When you check back in history, you find out that they what they did was they we got the history of, of Nebuchadnezzar. Sargon too. All those people that lived in, in the 600s BC and so forth. We got the history of the Pharaohs, Seti and Ramses and so forth. But yet and still, they've managed to drop 12 tribes of people through the cracks of history. And nobody knows where they are. They're going to tell me we've got 12 missing tribes of earth, people on this earth. We're not missing. We've just been missed 
identified. And the reason for that is because, like Satan said in Isaiah 14 chapter, I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'm going to sit in the temple in Jerusalem. I'm going to be just like God, having everybody worshiping in him. And so the major religions on this earth today, all of the major religions on this earth today, uh, 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 is of the adversary of the devil because no one can prove who uh, uh, you are. That's what the deal is. No one can prove who you are, but your history is written in this Bible here. So why, can't, why don't our ministers teach us who we are out of this Bible here? Simply because they receive their charters and their licenses from organizations that were set up by their taskmasters. Now, as far as eating unclean foods is concerned, let me read something to you that's going to happen in the first resurrection when the Messiah... Uh, 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 returns back uh, uh, back to uh, to the earth. Uh, you have to understand that the things that Yahweh said, he meant those things, and those things was going to be uh, 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 forever. They were not just, this is why when the Messiah came, the Messiah kept the laws of God. He walked in the laws of God. And uh, But today, People tell me, say, well, hey, we don't need to go. We don't need to uh, 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 keep the laws of God. All we got to do is have faith. Faith in what? Faith that you're going to be saved for not, doing, for, uh, uh, for not doing the things that you're supposed to do. Yahweh says that, let me pick this up for you, my brother. You can write this down uh, if you want to. It's, 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 it's in Isaiah chapter 66. And I'm going to read something to you here out of Isaiah chapter 66. He's going into the first resurrection when the, uh, 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 when the Messiah returns. I'm going to start this kind of early so uh, you can get a drift of what's going on. I'm going to pick this up at verse, uh, Isaiah 66 and verse 7. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pains came, she was delivered of a man-child. It's talking about the house of Israel that was delivered of a man-child before her pains came, before she went in captivity to all the nations. Verse 8. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Judah travailed, she brought forth her children. In other words, as soon as we go off into, uh, just before we get ready to go off in this great tribulation period, this is when Judah is going to start to produce fruit for salvation. This is why when you read Revelation 7 chapter, Revelation, uh, the angel stood up and said, uh, don't hurt anything till we've sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and there was 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And when you get down to verse 8 or verse 9, it says, after this I saw a great number, a multitude of all nations, tongues, and language that came through the great tribulation. They had to come through the great tribulation, but remember, Paul told Israel they were going to be saved from God, from the wrath of Yahweh. Verse 9. Shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth, saith Yahweh? <coughs> Excuse me. Shall I, call, shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith your God? Rejoice you with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all you that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all you that mourn for her, that you may suffer and be satisfied with the breast of her consolation, that you may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the, and the power of the European, or the glory, the wealth, of the Europeans like a flowing stream. Then shall you suffer, you shall be born on her side, and dandled upon her knees. As one whom her mother comforted, so will I comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem, not in heaven now, in Jerusalem. And when you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like an herb and the hand of Yahweh shall be known toward his servants and his indignation toward his enemies. For behold, I, Yahweh, will come with fire and with chariots like a whirlwind to render my anger with fury and my rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh plead with all flesh and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. They that, listen to this, my brother. Verse 17, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouth shall be consumed together, saith Yahweh. 
that that takes care of that right there even uh yahweh said when he set up his kingdom the people that's eating those abominations let's understand what these abominations are when you read the law book the law book tell you that the only thing that you can eat out of that water must have scales and fins on it everything else is an abomination to you and we are quick to go to a place and eat lobsters crabs and shrimp and all those other crustaceans all these other scavengers but Yahweh said that those things are an abomination to you so what you have to do is this you have to discern whether you're going to read what's written down here or whether you're going to read what somebody has tried to interpret for you uh, uh, uh. let me uh let me read another piece of scripture here until we get a, somebody here to call in here and tell me when they're going to heaven. Let's read another piece of scripture here out of Jeremiah 37 chapter and see what Jeremiah had to say was going to take place once your brother, the Messiah, returns on the scene. And this brother has been the most talked about brother in, on the earth. Yet and still, his, even today, his, peep, his people are treated like the scum of the earth. I'm going to pick this up at, uh, at uh, Jeremiah uh, uh, chapter, chapter 37, chapter 37, and, and see what we can get out of it. But first, let me say this. What we need to do is this. We need to sit down and consider why things has happened to us that has happened to us, and maybe we can come up uh, uh, with some answers. The reason why things that's happened to us the way that they have is simply because we've managed to father, follow other nations. And the Yahweh told us, say, look, search the law and the prophets, because in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of him. And the nations today, they are not testifying of the house of, uh, of God, what, uh, the God of Israel. What they're doing is testifying to you of a God that was given to you newly by your slave master. Uh, th I said uh, 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 Ezekiel 37, 30, uh, 37 chapter, but I'm, it's in Jeremiah 37 chapter. I'm sorry, forgive me for that. Jeremiah 37, and I'm going to pick this up at uh, 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 verse 18. Jeremiah 37 and verse 18. Now, what had happened was uh, Yahweh told the prophet Ezekiel, say, look, you take your two sticks, one for Judah, and one for Israel and join them together because he had divided the house so that he could tear down the house and scatter us to the four corners of the earth and then bring us back and set up a governmental system up on this earth. So he told him, say, you take these two sticks and join them together. Um, pick this up at verse 17. And join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in your hand. And when the people of your children shall speak and say unto you, saying, will you not show us what you mean by these sticks? Say unto them, Thus saith the Adonai Elohim, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribe of Israel his fellows, and put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. And the sticks where on you write shall be in, their, in, in your hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Adonai Elohim, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king of them all. And they shall no more be two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with the idols, nor with the detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them so they shall be my people and I will be my, their God. And David my servant shall be king over them and they all shall have one shepherd. They also shall walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant wherein your fathers have dwelled and they shall dwell therein even they and their children and their children's children forever and my servant David shall be a prince over them forever moreover I will make a covenant of peace with them it shall be an everlasting covenant with them and I will place them and multiply them and my, set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore my tabernacle also shall be with them yes I will be their people and they shall be 
I will be their God, rather, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Everybody talking about who they're going to be with. Yahweh said he's going to be with his people. Uh, go ahead, Carla. Hello? Go ahead, Carla. Hello, on now? Hello, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'd like to, I've been listening to you, and you make some, I mean, a lot of things that you say I agree with, but I'd like to ask you this question, and I'll hang up after I ask the question and let you and hear your comment. You know, I read the Bible a bit, and I'm not no scholar or anything like that, but when I read the first five books of the Bible, I don't get no strong consensus that it says that God had an only begotten son. And uh, when I hear about, I know about the Christian Bible says the Holy New and uh, Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But I don't read nowhere in the first five books where it mentioned that God had an only begotten son. But it says God is one. Mm -hmm. i like to hear your comment on that. Your, your, uh, and I'll hang up your comment on that. Okay, my brother. Uh, what you need to do, my brother, is get you uh, some writings called the Tetragamon. The Tetragamon explains Lord, God, uh, with it's all caps, when it's all capital letters, when it's all small letters, and what it does in the beginning, when you first start reading the Bible, it says, in the beginning, Elohim. This is what uh, God means in Hebrew. It's a multi word that refers to the God family. This is why it kept saying, and God did this, God did that. And then all of a sudden, it said, and the Lord God, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now it's saying, and Yahweh Elohim, not just Elohim. So what is shown by the, using the word Elohim, what it, shows, what it shows you is this. It shows you a multi-plurality of God. To show you what I mean, uh, remember when you was reading about when Moses went to the burning, burning bush? It was an angel there. And who, who did the angel tell him he was? He told him, say, I'm the Lord your God. You see, simply because he was standing in God's stead. When the Messiah showed on the scene, the reason why the brother could say he was God because he was standing in God's stead. And we know that once this brother died, he was resurrected. But let me show you, it does mention it. It didn't mention it as his only begotten son, but it mentioned something that was going to be, uh, some, something was going, going to be done. Uh, if you turn your book, my brother, to uh, Genesis chapter 3, and verse uh, 15. Now, once Eve had eaten of that, that forbidden fruit and gave it to her husband to eat, and the curse came upon Eve, and, and, and a, it was a curse and a commandment now. The curse was that in pain, and, and the curse is in verse 16. It says, And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In sorrow shall you bring forth children. She's still bringing forth children today, isn't she? Huh? And your desire, this is the commandment, and your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. In other words, whatever you desire, it has to correspond with what your husband's desire. Now let's back up here uh, at verse, uh, verse 14. It says, And Yahweh Elohim said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle and above all beasts of the field. Upon your belly shall you go, and your dust and the dust shall you eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity. In other words, I'm going to put an enemy between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. He's talking to Satan now. He say, this enemy I'm going to put between you and the woman, it's going to bruise your head and you, uh, your you're going to bruise his heel, and he's going to bruise your head. Now Moses told the children of Israel, said, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise unto you, like unto me. And whosoever do not hear that prophet shall be cut off from among his people. Now let's, let's, let's see, you read the story. Let's see the thing that God had made uh, uh, Moses to be. He told Moses, say, I made you a God to Pharaoh. So the man that, would, that he was talking, this prophet would be a God. Moses was a redeemer. The man would be a redeemer. Moses was a lawgiver. The man would be a lawgiver. And this is the same attributes that the Messiah showed uh, uh, when he was born. And he did not become 
the, uh, the Son of God until he was resurrected of the dead and became the firstborn among many brothers. But it's mentioned in the book, my brother. As a matter of fact, when you get into the psalm, David even talked about it in the psalms. You know, it's not just something that was written in the New Testament. Isaiah even said, a virgin shall... See, we can't just say, well, I'm going to believe part of this book, but the other part I'm not going to believe. Because if you do that, then you're going to miss out on a lot because all of the prophets had some things that's going on on the earth today. And unless you read those things, then you can truly be deceived by what's happening. It's time for our deliverance, and nobody's talking, talking about nothing. Nobody's talking about nothing. It's written in the book, my brother. Uh, uh, sometime when you get some time, when we have enough time to discuss it, you come by uh, 3901A Covington Highway, and... Uh, uh, and bring your book and we'll sit down and we'll discuss these things and I'll show you every place it's mentioned about this Messiah. Even Isaiah said, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth seed and you shall call his name Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government that shall be no end upon the throne of David to order it and to establish it from henceforth and forever. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts shall perform this. Go ahead, Carla. Yes, uh, I want to uh, you know your response to individuals who say that God, well, God uh, has uh, sent Jesus Christ right to the earth, earth right to redeem and save his people. Now, I want to know your response to people who say that Jesus Christ, there was records of Jesus Christ before the Bible was even created. If you understand what I'm saying. I didn't understand you. Okay, so I will restate it. What would be your response to individuals who say that there are records of uh, a, a sinless individual, sinless person like Jesus Christ being sent to the earth before the Bible was even uh, composed? What I say to them? What would, yes, sir. What would I tell them to show me the records. Okay. And That's what I tell them. Show me the records. I don't want no book that somebody wrote in 1959. Show me the records. See, it's one thing I can say about this Bible here. This Bible proves itself out. You don't have to prove this Bible. You can get in, uh, a lot of people say it's been tampered with and a whole lot of other things. But if you get in the prophet Daniel and read the prophet Daniel, Daniel talked about the beast with the seven heads and the ten horns and the ten crowns and so forth. And the angel of the Lord let him know that these were ten kings that was going to arise. It was going to be kingdoms that was going to be set up on the earth and so forth. So when we go back into the history books and uh, uh, read about uh, the history of the earth from 606 B.C. up until the present, you'll find out that so far we've had six heads. We're still waiting on the, on, on the seventh one. So far we've had nine kings that has come up to try to revive the Holy Roman Empire since Rome fell in 476 A.D. We're waiting on the 10th one today. And the books tell you, say, they're going to destroy the mighty and the holy people. Well, what you do is this. Look at us as a nation of people, as a nation of people, and you can very well see that we are systematically being destroyed. And it's gotten to the place now to where we, we've managed by not dealing with our children the way that we're supposed to deal with our children, we've managed to turn loose a group of people in the streets right now that even the parents are afraid of. So you can very well see the nations are not going to take this. There's executive orders that has already been signed to destroy us as a people. Once this, Jeremiah told you that uh, uh, once the economy of America fall down, it's going to be ruler against ruler and violence in the land. In other words, governor against governors, mayors against mayors, and so forth. And it's going to all be about that cash flow. And once, once that come about, what they're going to do is this. They're going to send FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Area uh, uh, Organization, into, uh, 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 into your neighborhood. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to declare a martial law. And everything that moves is going to either be killed or go to jail. Scripture says this, they're going to destroy us. They're, Satan is trying to destroy our entire seed so that he would make God a lie. This is the reason why we're in the position you, uh, we're in. Ask yourself one question. If you believe God loves you, tell me why he brought your people over here to slave. And once you get to that, then you'll find out why the things are written in the scripture the way that they're written in, in there. You'll understand why the things that are happen, happening to us are happening to us. And you'll understand why the prophets and so forth must be preserved and have been preserved this long for one purpose 
and one purpose alone so that we can find the word so that we could find our God the nation is going to have to grab on to us everybody that wrote anything in this book came out of one nation of people everybody that was sent to teach everybody else come out of one nation of people and it's one that one nation of people that God is going to set up once again to rule this earth for a thousand years in complete peace okay okay all right you listen hello yeah okay all right what would you say is that determining factor that has caused our nation to just degrade or just you know just i, I didn't hear what has called what do you think is the d determining factor that has called our nation to basically deteriorate despite the fact that um the forefathers of this country have considered themselves creating a constitution after the word, after the Bible, Con based on the Bible. The Constitution was not based on the Bible. The Constitution was based on we the people. Oh, okay. Okay, okay it wasn't based on the Bible. My brother it was based on the ideas of slave owners. Okay. Uh, uh, and according to the laws of God, if anybody had a slave, they could only keep him seven years. Brother, we've been here 400 years. So, you know, that, that's what you have to deal with. You have to deal with what man is dealing with. Uh, let me read something to you, my brother, and it'll show you what the determinant fa uh, the factor is that determined what was going to happen to us. I'm in, uh, I'm in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, chapter chapter 28. I'm going to start this at verse 1. I'm going to skip around, so go get your book and read Deuteronomy 28, and it'll tell you the determining factor that put us in this captivity and has had us uh, in and out of captivity uh, since 606 B.C. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that your, Yahweh your God will set you high above all the nations on the earth. And all these blessings shall come on you and, and overtake you, if you shall hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. And then he went on to tell you how many blessings, how the blessings that you was going to receive and so forth. But... Let me read something to you that if we wouldn't keep it. Uh, uh, verse 32, it says, Your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people, and your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day, and there shall be no might in your hand. Verse 36, Yahweh shall bring you and your king, which you set over you, into a nation which neither you nor your fathers have known. And there shall you serve other gods, wood and stone. Now, consider this. When you get back and deal with King Solomon, King Solomon did trade with all the known nations on the earth. America hadn't been discovered. And since we've been in here in America, we have worshipped the gods that was taught to us by our slave masters, and we know it. Uh, uh, that was verse 36. Uh, uh, verse 36. The Lordship, okay, I read that. Uh, verse 40, uh, uh, 41, it says, You shall beget sons and daughters, but you shall not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Verse 43, The stranger that is within you shall get up above you very high, and you shall come down very low. He shall lend to you, and you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come up on you and shall pursue you and overtake you till you be, be destroyed because you hard hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandment and to walk in his statutes. And they shall be upon you, listen to this, and they shall be upon you for a sign. These curses, y'all know what happened. When we move out of the neighborhood, they can't do nothing with it but tear it down and build a parking lot. We move in neighborhoods after everybody else move out the neighborhood. And, uh, 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 and we know that Atlanta uh, has color lines drawn all over the city. We know that. But they're there for a reason. Uh, uh, Yahweh told us they don't learn the ways of the strangers. If we, go to, if we live in his neighborhoods, if we go to his schools, if we eat in his restaurant, we're going to learn his ways. And that's just what we have done. Uh, verse 46. Verse 47, rather. Because you serve not the Lord your God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, say you serve your enemies, which Yahweh shall send against you in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until you be destroyed. 
Yahweh shall bring a nation against you from far, from the ends of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose tongue you shall not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor upon the young. So these are the things uh, uh, that we uh, that we base uh, that we base our uh, some of the things that we base what God has happened to what God has done to us upon. We base them upon what's written in the book. This is the only this is the only thing that we got. Man, tell me, say, well, you know, you know, man wrote the book. Man wrote all kind of books. Who you think? Well, you think God came out here and sat out here and wrote a book? What he did was he told his prophets what to write, and his prophets wrote this, and, and you can prove these things. The things that's written in the Bible, you can go in the public library and prove out of the history book. But what we don't do is this. We don't read the whole story. We go in the New Testament and read the New Testament and let some meathead try to interpret things to us out of the New Testament. But you tell your minister, I've been waiting on one of them to call me and show, tell me where you're going to heaven. I know y'all have heard it, and a lot of y'all go to them, them, them Christian whorehouses out there. I know, I know that's what you do, but what you do is this. Tell your preacher to call me and read to me out of this book here where God say, I'm going to bring you to heaven. Are you going to heaven? That's what I want you to do. And no one has been able to do that simply because I've issued that challenge for the longest, but no one has been able to do that because people know what they are dealing with. They are dealing with a, a bunch of unrighteousness. Even Paul told uh, 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 the Europeans, say, I, I say the thing that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils and not the God. Didn't we just celebrate, uh, what was that, that day where you buy the candy, that junk? Uh, what's that? Valentine's Day, right? Cupid, some little fat boy with a bow, right? A pagan deity. Then we went back and we celebrated in the beginning of their year, we celebrated Janus, the two-faced God that looks into the past and into the future. People went out and got drunk, shot the guns and everything, you know, and had a good time, made all those resolutions and so forth. And all of this was in, in, in honor of a pagan deity. Let's go back a little further than that. Who was it that, set the, uh, that, that produced the Olympics in this city here? Wasn't it the Christians? Huh? Huh? Okay, well, wasn't the, uh, uh, the Olympics dedicated to Apollos? Apollos is a pagan deity. Yeah, America is mad on her idols. This is why uh, she's going to be the first country to be destroyed. Do you know that America, the land of liberty, is the only country on the face of the earth that you can go to and worship anything you want to worship, any way that you want to worship, as long as you don't step on nobody else's uh, 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 private rights? Uh, go ahead, Carl. Hello. Go hey, ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, I was just listening to you uh, talk about uh, one of the signs of the, uh, of the the economic fall of the United States mm -hmm. in the Book of Revelation, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the um, the involved with Magog and I believe Agog or something like that. God now, and Magog. Yes. Yes. Russia and the Prince of Russia. Russia and the Prince of Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering if you could expound on that and also um, tell me if, 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 if Asia has anything to do with that. If Asia have anything to do yeah, with it? Yeah, you know, China. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let, let's understand this, my brother. Number one, the Russians are Asians. Russia is in Asia. Before World War II, it was divided up. The world was divided, uh, that part of the world was divided up into Europe and Asia. Uh, 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 well, it was, it was called Eurasia, rather, uh, before World War II. Then after World War II, they divided up again into Europe and Asia. The Russians are Asian. That mighty army that's going to come down into Jerusalem is coming out of China. China has the largest standing army on the earth. They have 200 plus million men in their, in their army. And this is the army that Russia is going to match with their army to lead down into Jerusalem. See, when you uh, tell you what you do, if you want to find out what's going to happen to the United States, read Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 51, Isaiah 47, Isaiah 18, and Isaiah 13. And uh, the first, second, and third trumpet in Revelations are eight, and the first, second, and third vial of wrath in Revelation 16 is the destruction of America. And it's going to be by Russia. If you read those chapters I gave, it's going to tell you that, that Russia is going to be the one that's going to destroy America. People talking about the bear dead. The bear hasn't been dead yet. Yahweh has pertained, uh, has set them up for longevity. To show you that, my brother, 
I'm going to go back in the book of Revelation and read something to you that happened after the millennial period, after, after Christ's reign upon this earth. Uh, now we know that when the Messiah comes, they're going to, it's an angel going to throw uh, Satan into the bottom of this pit. You see, we know that. Now let's go and see what's going to happen to, uh, 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 to them after the, uh, uh, after the thousand years. Uh, uh, it's in Revelation 20 and verse 7. It says, oh, well, I picked this up uh, at verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of Elohim and of the anointed one and shall reign with him for a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. There it is again, right after a thousand years, right? To gather them together to battle, the number of whom is at the sands of the sea. Now, if you want to read about that battle, what you do is go read Ezekiel chapter 38. Ezekiel chapter 38 is that last battle that's going to take place. Verse 9. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire brimstone where the beast, this last king, and the false prophet, this last pope, are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So you can very well see my brother Yahweh has prepared Russia uh, uh, for longevity, longevity. Even after the thousand year period, Satan is gonna use Russia again to come up to do battle, but it's not gonna be in the battle this time. If you read the Songs of Solomon, uh, in the Songs of Solomon, it tell you that uh, it said, my beloved was in the city, he was behind our wall, he was looking through the lattice. He was looking through the lattice at the armies coming up. He wasn't excited about it. There was no walls around Jerusalem. There wasn't nobody excited about it. Fire just came down from heaven out of Yahweh and devoured them. That's all. And then there was a new, this earth here becomes the lake of fire. This is why Peter said, you know, you, you know what manner of creature that you should be seeing that this earth shall be burned. This earth will become the lake of fire and everybody who don't make it uh, uh, into that kingdom will be raised up and, and, and put left on this earth, which would, would be the lake of fire. This is why in the book of Revelation, you saw the people that had gotten the victory over the beast and, and had lived during the first resurrection. They were standing on the sea of glass. Looked like they were standing in space. The new heaven and the new earth was coming. This earth here had become uh, 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 the lake of fire. And uh, as far as Russia is concerned, my brother, like you said, Russia has been prepared for longevity, and you know how the bear is done. Down when, uh, when, when uh, John F. Kennedy was president, the bear went down there in Cuba, and what happened? Kennedy said, if you don't come out from down there, we're gonna fire on the mother country, right? Russia wasn't ready. So what did Russia do? She tucked up, got her missiles out of there, and came right on out of there, right? But this last battle, this last battle is going to be what? It's going to be uh, set up to destroy America first. America has to go. America has dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. What goes around comes around. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword and America will be destroyed. Uh, go ahead, Carla. Who are the people that are in Israel? Go ahead, Carla. Hello? Hello? Who are the people that are in Israel and Jerusalem now? That is two nations of people in Israel today, my sister. One of them is the Palestinians, uh, Abraham, nephew, Lot's uh, two boys, Moab and Ammon. Uh, those are the, uh, uh, the Moabites and the Ammonites that's in the land. The people that's calling themselves Jews is Esau. Now, when you read in the New Testament and you read about the people called the Herodians, Herod the Great, those are his people. Now, if you go back and read history, you find out what happened. Read the words of Josephus and you can very well see what happened. After the, the, the Europeans invaded Jerusalem, it was at Passover, and they killed off 1.5 million of our people. And in the last 97,000, they sold to the Egyptians, or the Ethiopians, to work in the mines. Okay, now Herod and his people they didn't have no people to rule, rule over, so they went on up into Europe, right? Didn't these, these so-called Jews not come out of Europe? Huh? 
They didn't come out of Ethiopia. As a matter of fact, they don't even do the things that the Bible say do. They mimic keeping Passover. They mimic keeping a whole lot of days, some of the, some of the days that we keep. But the scripture says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You should have a holy convention. <coughs> On Saturday, excuse me, when the Israelis first moved into, the, uh, into their land, everything used to shut down on Friday night. Everything used to shut down from Friday afternoon at sunset to Saturday afternoon at sunset because they was trying to prove to the world that they were the Jews. This was in 48. But as time has progressed, everything is wide open, live, and in living color. You know why? People aren't watching. See? So now what they're doing is this. They're giving us the paganism they're practicing their paganism, but the Jews were set up to teach the world doctrine. And they aren't teaching anybody anything. The only thing they're trying to do is keep the Palestinians from killing them all. Because God told them, say, as long as you and your brother's land, you're going to have war from generation to generation. And ever since you've heard of Israel, there's been war there. Now, the Palestinians over there saying that they're, Israel is called Palestine. We're the Palestinians. But see, we over here talking about, we African Americans. See, first we was, we call ourselves colors. Then we call ourselves Negroes. Then we call ourselves blacks. Then we call ourselves Afro-Americans. Then we call ourselves African-Americans. Then we call ourselves Muslims. Then we call ourselves Harry Krishna and whatever else you want to get around to. But the truth of the matter is this, we are the Hebrew Israelites the chosen people of God, our location, our situation and circumstances compared with the Bible prove that we truly are the Hebrew Israelites. And if you don't believe that, come to 3901A Covington Highway on Saturday at 1 p.m., Tuesday night at 8 p.m., Thursday night, sisters only, at uh, 8 p.m., and Sunday morning at 10.30 p.m. for prophecy class. Bring your Bible, tablet, pencil, small tape recorder, a two 90-minute tape, bring your minister if you can, uh, and, and uh, we'll turn him out too. And uh, uh, because the truth cast to the ground will rise again, and man is afraid of the truth. The truth, God uh, uh, said, the Messiah said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Well, why don't people know the truth? Why are people all talking about going off to heaven? Why are people worshiping on Sunday? Why are people telling me Christ was born December 25th? And my Bible tells me he was born in Sunday. Why do we, uh, uh, in the summer, why do we celebrate his birthday on the winter solstice? Simply because we got this mess from the Europeans. But see, we love the way of strangers. See, we love the way of strangers. Night. Yahweh be with you, and uh, my blessings too. Living mouth of disagreeable. Do you have something against me? Why you like to argue so much? I'm